And we are here in Houston at the Astrodome where in 24 hours the Mets will face the Astros in Game 1 of the National League playoffs. Hi again everyone, I'm Len Berman and during the next half hour, Marv Albert, Sal Marciano and I will review this magical Mets season and preview the playoffs. Marv and Sal are standing by live in New York. Marv? Thanks Len and on the eve of the start of the Mets second season I'll be taking a close up look at how they got to this point from opening day to the finale this past Sunday. And I'll document the lives and times of the Mets off the field. So much has happened to this team that's writing new chapters to the Mets legend. Len, what's up in Houston? Okay, Sal, today in Houston, both teams worked out, first the Astros, then the Mets. At times, it looked like baseball, and at times, not. First, there was media baseball. You've heard of Tinkers, to Evers, to Chance. Well, this one was Backman, to Strawberry, to Carter. And maybe you've heard of Mets football. Well, this one was Ojeda, pitching it to Mitchell, complete for the touchdown. And then there is the dome itself, the soft turf with lots of seams, the strange lighting for the pop-ups. And with four of the possible seven games here, does it give the Astros a slight edge? And we're going to have to, to uh, I guess, change our way of thinking when we go to New York because you, you play different as an infielder, as an outfielder on artificial turf than you do on the natural grass. But do the Mets have a talent edge? If they do, according to the Astros, it's only because of media hype over New York's team. Going to playoffs by the Mets and uh, everybody just kind of looks around. All you read about and see are the Mets, the Mets, the Mets. You know, everybody's kind of just like going, geez, are we, like, are we in baseball? I mean, are we in the National League or... Our, our 96 games we won, do they mean anything, you know? But, like, well, after reading the paper today, obviously no one likes us, uh, except the New York people. <laughs> uh, I was pretty much uh, almost shocked by uh, what the uh, people were saying about us. Um, you know, being a part of this ball club, uh, I don't feel the cockiness on the ball club. I feel the confidence and, and a wanting to win, a willingness to win. And the pitching matchup for game one, no hit Mike Scott and Dwight Gooden. So the most intriguing question, does he or doesn't he? Does Mike Scott doctor the baseball? <laughs> they talk about sandpaper and all that kind of sandpaper stuff. Sandpaper and glue and spit and Vaseline. Right. Where, where do you hide it? Every place. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give that away now. <laughs> you know, everybody knows that Scotty has scuffed a few balls up in his, in his, in his time this year. Uh, but I don't let that bother me. He's done it all year long. He's got away with it. So he does do it. So I believe he does it. I've seen, I've seen a few balls last time we were here, uh, more than a few balls. That I know that uh, the turf here, you just don't get those turf burns on a ball in the same spot, you know, six or seven different balls. That's why Mike Scott was uh, telling us all the illegal things he does to the baseball. Uh, what do you do? Well, nothing illegal. I just, uh, <laughs> maybe down the road somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't have to do anything illegal yet. Well, still to come on our special report, Marv Albert's review of the 1986 Mets season. They won 108 games, but unless they win eight more, it was all for naught. We'll be right back. On to the playoffs. The Mets' second season is sponsored by Mitsubishi Motors and by the Daily News, New York's hometown paper. Since Davey Johnson took over as manager of the Mets three years ago, it's been a steady progression to reach this point. 90 wins, 1984, 98 last season, close but no cigar. This season, the Mets are playing baseball well into October, the end result of a remarkable 162-game ride. They excelled in every category, tying their team record of 55 home wins, setting a new mark with 53 road victories. At every level, the Mets performed at least 20 games over 500, except on AstroTurf, where they played at a clip of only 646 baseball. Everyone knows the Mets were baseball's world beaters in 86, but the Mets led baseball in other noteworthy categories, such as most music videos, most GQ covers, most unique haircuts, 
and most television commercials. Got the best stuff I've ever seen. Sorry, Dwight. More milk, got more. But this 1986 Mets season began with a frightening scene captured by our cameras this spring. Watch it! God, dog it! Milk, milk, are you all right? Stay, just stay where you are. Did it break the glass? Did it break the glass? Oh, God, it did. Mookie fully recovered, but as the season got underway, some are asking for a Mets recovery. What's wrong with the two and three Mets? This team is out of sync right now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we're not playing very well at all as a team. Then the Mets' runaway train started to roll. Against the Giants, this charitable contribution by Jose Uribe helped the Mets to a six-game lead through May. I think by far we're the best club in this division, and, and you know, I'll say it right now that I believe if anybody can run away with it, the New York Mets, Mets can run away with it. In June, the Mets played 10 games over 500. Despite almost being swept by the Expos, they were a confident bunch. Even if they did sweep us, you know, they need a lot of help from somebody else, and they're just not going to get it. You know, we just that, we're that good. In July, Mets old-timers watched their 1986 counterparts build the largest lead at the All-Star break since divisional play was unveiled in 1969. Which team is better, the 69 Mets or the 86 version? This team probably would beat the 69 Mets or the 73 Mets by 73 by 10 games, 69 by a game and a half. But this team's definitely better because of their offense. If you put these two teams on, on, on the same field uh, to compete one, against one another, no doubt Cleon Jones would say the 69 Mets are the best. One of the memorable games of the season, after Dave Parker dropped the last down of the ninth inning, the Mets ran out of players, forcing relief pitchers Roger McDowell and Jesse Orozco to alternate in the outfield, and the Mets won in 14. A mini-crisis in August, when Gary Carter injured his thumb, but the Mets set a club record winning 8 of 9 on the West Coast trip, doing it without him, capped off by this. The Mets made an exhibition stop in Boston. Perhaps a World Series preview? They eventually increased their lead to 21 games, another record for divisional play. And 10 days later, finally clinched the division on their sixth attempt. Backman to Hernandez. The unbelievable season is not over. This club has come so far in so few years that it's just a great feeling to be a part of it. It's real sweet. Glad to do it at home. We let them down on the road, but I think I enjoyed it more here. A season to remember for sure. But for the Mets, there are some numbers to remember. Over the years, the Mets have not fared well against the Astros, particularly in the Astrodome. What are the Mets most fearful of in the playoffs? We asked one man for his opinion. Top 10 fears of the New York Mets. Here we go. Number 10. Houston has superior starting pitching. Number 9. Astros have home field advantage. Number 8. New York fans might use profanity. Give City bad name. <laughs> Actually, the Mets might be thinking of numbers 9 and 10 on David Letterman's list. They will have to contend with left-hander Bob Nepper, who shut out the Mets earlier this year. And with former Mets Nolan Ryan and Mike Scott, Scott finishing in glorious fashion, clinching the Western Division with a no-hitter. Hey, folks, we're number one in here. We did it this year, and celebrate with us. We're here, we're here to stay. Now it's the Mets. They're next in line. I think it might go five. Uh, I think we're just that much better. We feel like we have a chance to beat the Mets, and uh, we'll have to play good ball to do it. We know that, but we feel like we have a chance. I definitely feel that, that if everything goes according to, uh, to talent, that, that we'll prevail. And then there is the Yogi Factor. Yogi Berra, former Mets coach and manager, one-time Yankee great, has participated in postseason play a record 21 times. A lot of people uh, still wonder why you uh, took a job in Houston. Well, it's something different, Sal. You know, uh, I enjoy it. See what happens. You know, if I don't like it, I don't have to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> well, despite uh, the Yogi factor, the Astros are on the short end of the Las Vegas odds. The Mets, uh, like the odds makers, feel the supernatural powers of Yogiism will not work 
from the dugout. Len is standing by near the Astros dugout. Let's go back to Houston. Thank you, Marv, with Keith Hernandez in the Mets locker room. And Marv mentions the Houston pitching. Do they have the edge there? Well, I think this, they're, they're, they're the two best pitching staffs in the National League. I think that they might have them a little more in depth in, in their bullpen. Okay. But I think the point is that we're a better club against right-hand pitching, and they, don't, and they don't have the depth left-handed out of the pen. And our best line is against right-handers. Marv mentions the Astrodome being the chamber of horrors, as it has been to the Mets teams over the years. How about that one? Well, it is a definite advantage. I believe that. Um, it took me two years of my career playing 12 games to get a hit here. But I think once I got over that psychological impact of the Dome, I've always hit well here. It's different. I don't like it here, but it's the playoffs. I'll play anywhere. Howard Johnson in the interview said the Mets will win it in five were that good. Well, I'm glad Howard feels that way. It's going to be a tough series. I respect the Astros very much. I think if, if we can beat Mike Scott the first night, and I don't want to say if, that's the negative. We beat, uh, when we beat Mike Scott, right. I think we'll win it in five. Uh, when you beat my son. Right. Right. Does he do anything to the baseball, by the way? Of course. He, of Ab course. Absolutely. No question. No question. I've seen the balls. And the MVP in the National League this year is? I think it's going to be Mike Schmidt. Yeah. Yeah. And if it wasn't Schmidt? Mmm. Jeez. You got Glenn Davis, Carter, or myself. So if it came down to you and Carter, is that a possibility that could come down to one of you two? It could. Who knows? The guy that's going to win it, there's going to be a lot of guys getting first place votes. It'll be a lot big split there. The guy that's going to win it's going to get the most second and third place votes. So Schmidt, you think? I think it's going to be Schmidt. Right. Thank you, Keith. Good luck. Okay, thanks. All right, when we come back, we will take a look at the soap opera image of the New York Mets and Sal Marciano will have that report for us. Baseball's best team won two-thirds of its games, and Mets personalities blossomed along the way. They were bad guys as well as good guys. Like a successful soap opera, the plot thickened. The Mets offered us more than hits, runs, and errors. The Double Day, starring the New York Mets. The saga of Double Day's team started at Shea Stadium. When the Mets found out secondhand that star pitcher Dwight Gooden injured his ankle in a mysterious accident in Florida. At the time, the youngest Cy Young Award winner was negotiating a contract with the team. If it happened again next year, would you call the Mets? Yeah. <laughs> next time I will. <laughs> if I get a call, I'll call the Mets. Mets troubles continued in spring training when Commissioner Peter Uberoff revealed penalties for a handful of baseball's past drug abusers. The group included Mets all-star first baseman Keith Hernandez. Obviously, I'm not pleased with the decision of the commissioner. After a stage wait, Hernandez finally agreed to comply with Uberoff. More off-the-field turmoil. At the rent-a-car counter at LaGuardia Airport, Dwight Gooden and party had a verbal argument with a Hertz clerk. When Dwight picked up the next day's newspapers, he discovered that celebrity hood does have a flip side. Arrogant, egotistical, cocky, those high-fiving, curtain-calling Mets were called every name in the book by the opposition. In a few short months, they went from bad boys off the field to bad boys on the field. We don't like any baseball team in the National League. Uh, I don't care if they're in the West or the East, and every team we play, it seems like it's an all-out war. Me, um, I've always had the philosophy that I would never charge an unless I knew some, knew it for sure. And now Bill Williams and Roden are getting in a fight. Bill Robinson, brother, and Rick Roden. And both benches empty. Strawberry being tackled and kept away by Ozzie Virgil. And now it's every man for himself. I'm not out here to instigate anything, but it's just part of baseball and just something you go through and you have to protect yourself. Knight hits him with a right cross and here they come. I'm sure I'd do it again. I have a temper. I'm a competitor. And in that particular situation, I felt that he was aggressive and, and um, he wanted to take it farther. And before he did, I did. One fight the Mets did turn down was a challenge by the undefeated heavyweight contender, Mike Tyson. Nah, I wouldn't take a chance. I think I just dodged him and uh, run all around the ring to the bell rings. 
despite the fights on the ball field, the Mets could do no wrong. Off the field, they signed Lee Mazzilli to a minor league contract. Then in Chicago, George Foster accused the Mets of racism. Later, he used the ball player's latest strategy. He blamed the press for misquoting him. I did not say the Mets were racist. I like to repeat, I did not say the Mets were racist. If you had to sum up your Mets career in a word, what would it be? It's hard to do it in one word, but a, a dream that didn't come true. The Mets plot thickened in Houston, where four players took their post-game sips at a local watering hole, Cooters, which incidentally is currently off-limits to Mets players. Four Mets were arrested and charged with assaulting off-duty uniform cops working as bouncers. The player's attorney reacting to the charges. That's bullshit. Kind of wish this weekend had never happened. <laughs> no, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> I mean, Yankee, go home. <laughs> That's the way I feel about it. The fracas also led to newfound rivalry between New York City and Houston. Entrepreneurs trying to strike it rich with t-shirts knocking the Mets. Uh, radio stations and police uh, stations wanting to outfit the entire squadron in them. Uh, it's been practically unbelievable. You guys have seen the t-shirt though, right? Yeah. yeah. You like it or? Special, what's that adventure? Will the Cooters incident distract the Mets during the playoffs? While in Houston, will the Mets hang out at Cooters? Will the Mets be able to focus on baseball with Houstonians heckling them? Tune in tomorrow. No question, the flamboyant Mets overshadowed the other team in town on the field as well as off. P.S. The soap opera at Yankee Stadium needs new characters, and the shipbuilding boss is in exile this October. Back to the Mets in Houston, and Len joins us. Okay, thank you, Sal. We're with Gary Carter. And Gary, let's answer a couple of points that Sal brought up. First of all, the cocky, high-fiving, arrogant New York Mets. Well, Lenny, it's not there. It's just a, a matter of uh, confidence for this ball club. We've played with that kind of confidence all season, uh, especially when you're at, at Shea Stadium. The home runs and uh, s certainly the, the emotion that comes from the fans, uh, it's like on a Broadway stage. You don't want to uh, not come out for a curtain call, and, and uh, I think that that's what has happened there in New York. Uh, we're in support of the fans. The fans are in support of us, so, hey, yeah. we're, we're going to show our emotions. Speaking of fans, how about the Houston fans and the negative reaction from the Cooters incident that Sal <laughs> talked about. Have you uh, met with some of that negativism so far? Well, when, of course, we were in uh, in Houston the last game uh, after the incident, uh, uh, we heard a little bit of it in the stands, and then and we it, it followed us to Cincinnati and a couple other towns, but I think it uh, died down somewhat, and, of course, it's still kind of pending, but uh, we're going to hear some of it, and I'm sure there'll be some signs up about it and all, but uh, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, it's a thing in the past, and uh, I I think it was blown out of proportion more than it really was. Okay, the truth. Who's the MVP in the National League? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Mr. Modesty. <laughs> I don't it. know. Do you have a shot? I, I feel a, there's a good shot there. Uh, it, it would be nice. It would be a thrill. But it, it, if it were to happen, I'd like to be able to cut it up into 24 pieces because I feel that this ball club has had an MVP year all the way around. Give half of it to Keith Hernandez? Yeah, definitely. All right. Thank definitely. you, Gary okay. Carter. All, all the right. best. Thank you. All right. We'll be back to wrap things up from Houston in just a minute. Just my drive gets the sign. Goes into the on to the playoffs the Mets second season has been sponsored by Lee Miles transmissions and by Mitsubishi Motors which I have been locating recently <laughs> for good reason I like the Mets in five, I look for a split at the Dome, and I, I see the Mets sweeping at Shea. And despite the injuries, I like the Red Sox over the Angels in six. I like the Mets in six. Uh, Mike Scott worries me because he could start three games. I like the Angels over the Red Sox. Those three games in Anaheim could hurt California. All right, Len, what do you, uh, what do you see it as? I'll go with the two of you on the Mets. I can't see a team winning 108 games and then going south. That's the American League. I'll go with Sal. Reggie, back in New York in the playoffs in October. It has to be. For Marv Albert and Sal Marciano, I'm Len Berman from Houston. Thanks for watching. For the fans and the players, these are the times of our lives.